Abuja Kaduna train services to resume in November, says federal government. Federal government inaugurates joint committee to address peculiarities of universities in IPs. Motorists lament continuous presence of petrol queues in Abuja. Plus Asia Pacific stocks mostly rise ahead of U.S. midterm elections. This is Business Express on the network service of the NTA and we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Leah Katung Babatunde. You're welcome. A very good morning to you. We start by informing you that the Minister of Transportation, Maaz Jaj Sambo, has announced a date for the commencement of the Abuja Kaduna train service. The minister announced the date while fielding questions during the PMB scorecard of his ministry. This month of November, we shall resume that service. We will not resume this service until every Nigerian held in captivity was reunited with their families. God has made that possible. The security agencies in this country, under the able leadership and support of Mr. President, have made that possible. The federal government has inaugurated a joint committee to address the peculiarities of Nigerian universities in the Integrated Personnel and Payroll Information System IPs. The joint committee comprises representatives of the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, OHEF, and the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and has three months to complete its assignment commencing from 1st November 2022. The Acting Accountant General of the Federation, Silva Okoliebo, who inaugurated the committee, stressed the need for compromise between both parties and assured that the OAGF was ready to accommodate all the legitimate peculiarities of the university community in the IPs. Director Information, Press and Public Relations in the OAGF, Henshaw Gubike, in a statement said it has become imperative to resolve all contentious issues between the federal government and ASU, noting that as long as the dispute continues, the ultimate losers are the Nigerian students and by extension, the nation. The Central Bank of Nigeria CBN says it has increased intervention in foreign exchange market, notwithstanding Nigeria's external reserves depreciated by $866.2 million in October 2022 to $37.39 billion from $38.255 billion it opened the month on the review. In just 10 months, the nation's foreign exchange buffer has depreciated by $3.13 billion from $40.5 billion to $37.39 billion as of October 31, 2022. Analysts attributed the decline in external reserves to increasing intervention by the CBN in SMIs and investor and exporters window to stabilize the naira exchange rate, lamenting the dwindling inflow from crude oil, among others. So we move to the business of the day. And of course, joining the conversation uh, before we move on, the state of Nigeria's economy with reference to the purchasing power of the Naira is our focus this morning. And to do just justice to the issue around this is the senior economist with SPM Professionals, Paul Alaji. Mr. Paul, you're welcome to Business Express. Yeah, good morning, and thank you so very much for having me. Yes, perhaps we begin with you giving us a picture. Let's have a sense of Nigeria's uh, purchasing power, the Naira. Well, over, over the time, uh, we have seen that what Naira can buy has continued to reduce uh, because of so many persons who are speculating uh, on, on the Naira. 
what they do is that with the recent announcement of central bank governor to redesign the naira we have seen that some unscrupulous persons have invaded the parallel market to exchange their naira for the dollars and that of course is uh, making it very difficult for naira to compete so for someone who hands in naira and uh, because of the valuation of naira it goes to the same market they were at two months ago, three months ago, one month ago, what that money can buy has significantly reduced. The cost of a bag of rice, which is one of the most common thing Nigerian buy, uh, from 25,000 local rice now to about 40,000, 38,000 naira. And that is really very worrisome because people's income have not increased. So now that what naira can buy continue to reduce then they have we have a lot to worry about because it is not what is written on the surface of currency or fiat money that matters it is what matters the most is what that mo that what that currency can buy so over the time what naira can buy from time to time continue to reduce and this is the real issue why and it's not just affecting nigeria it's even affecting the government because when you look at government budget, government budget have continued to increase, but what government can buy with what he has budgeted for also continue to reduce. Because we are all in this economy, household, firm, and government, consumption, investment, and government. So we are all in it together. So we need to do something to really improve what Naira can buy. If it does not, I have a number of projections. Maybe in the next six months or one year, Labour will come back to federal government and say, we want an increment because what you gave us, as at the time we're earning 30,000 naira, that could buy, say, two bags of rice. Now, 30,000 naira could not even buy a bag of rice. So when labor does that, remind, mark you, labor is not just people working for federal government or state government. Labor means labor, whether you are private sector. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge umbrella body for all Nigerians that are working. So labor may come to say, the value of money we earn has significantly reduced because of policies, because of people speculating on Naira, because of so many things. And that is why with the recent announcement Central Bank made, EFCC have said it's going to partner with Central Bank to deal with unscrupulous persons who continue to speculate against our own local currency. Okay, uh, perhaps um, you, you've said a whole lot, but some, some people would say, well, I don't transact in dollar i do everything in Arab. we've had a lot of people say that so why is the exchange rate affecting me <laughs> i laugh because exchange rate would affect everybody the reason is because national bureau of statistics told us of everything we consume finished product oh, about 80 percent of our imports are finished product we produce crude oil but we don't refine crude oil. So if you have seen any vehicle move from one point to the other in Nigeria, exchange rate would affect you, even if you are a passenger. Because if the price of PMS increases, the driver will ask for more money. The spare parts that we have on the vehicle are all imported. And you have to get to work in the morning. You know, so apart from those, you are buying rice. You just go to where they buy, and this rice is local rice. But why is exchange rate affecting it? It's affecting it because the miller of that rice must have purchased diesel. When war broke out in Ukraine, between Russia and Ukraine, the cost of gas also increased significantly from 300 per liter in Nigeria to over 800 naira per liter in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So whatever is happening is going to affect you. If exchange rate now gets poorer, because maybe because we don't produce enough, or because our currency has been weakened, then what, what does that mean? It will surely affect anybody even living in the remote part of the country. So exchange rate matters, and that is why one of the responsibility of monetary uh, authorities is stability. Stability in pricing, also stability in uh, currency. We need to achieve both stability for us to say that, yes, whatever we, what you have bought yesterday or today, so because what are the things affecting the value of Naira is both exchange rate as well as inflation. So if you, uh, let's not be in doubt. Whether we earn exchange rate directly or not, whether you buy directly or not, whatever you buy, and I want people watching this program now or later in future to ask, things you can see around you, from your table to your shoes to your clothes, how many of them are made in Nigeria? How many of them are produced in Nigeria? That is uh, the first equation. The second equation is, what is the quality and quantity 
what is the complexity of what we export to the rest of the world. So our export must significantly improve for our local currency to improve because when we keep exporting, we are securing job and we are saying thumbs up to the Naira. So um, you've, you've actually touched about the redesigning of, of the Naira that is in view or rather in, in process. Now, do you see changing the dynamics? Well, redesigning of Naira is what should have happened some years ago. Um, really? Ordinarily, every 10 years, it is advised by that central bank should reconsider. You could see some countries have done that in terms of redesign, even though not all countries of the world, because mm -hmm. it's not sacrosanct that you must redesign. Mm -hmm. Now, expectation of Nigeria is that when we redesign, what will happen to the value? The truth is that nothing directly will happen to the value. But the, most of the notes are not looking good. Perhaps that's why central bank feel we should. And also when you look at policy, NPR, NPC continue to adjust NPR 11.5 to 13, 13 to 14, 14 to 15. When all of this have been done, even to uh, above 15 now, inflation rather than falling, inflation is increasing. Perhaps central bank feels this could be the reason because we have lost track of 80% of total uh, over 3 trillion naira in circulation, more uh, currency in circulation. We have lost over 80%. The one we are making policy on is only those that are the banks that are within the banking sector. If you ask everybody to return the money back to the vote and we bring out a new one that we have a tremendous impact when we make monetary policy on such. So that could be the reason. Another reason is oh, when we do this, maybe to have implication on inflation and so on and so forth. Then the, uh, maybe currency available to people will be better and newer. Central Bank has also, Central Bank of has also mentioned that politicians that touch money somewhere, it is political season, you know. So there are several reasons that have been, that have been matured, that have been mentioned by the Central Bank governor. But here is the point. It is good if you change the face, face value of our currency, but it is better when the value of the currency improves. So whether it is E Naira or the design Naira, mm -hmm. what happens to the real value of Naira? When I want to transport myself from one point to another, whether in Sokoto or in Calabar, Lagos or Abuja or uh, in Newi, mm -hmm. what will happen to the value of that money. So it is enough for me to be carrying a beautiful note, but how far can that beautiful note carry me? This is a question perhaps that has been on the minds of many Nigerians. Okay, um, let me just take you aside. You, now that you've talked about the Naira looking clean and, and all that, in the last one week, I must say that I've been to about five ATMs and um, none of them give me a money that is old. All the notes came out brand new, 2022, stamped on them. Is there any reason why we're seeing all the new money come out now? Yeah, because, of course, the money are going to be phased out. What is the point? <laughs> this is the best time to throw all of them in the circulation. In circulation. So mm -hmm. let's use them for the remaining uh, lifespan they have. Quickly make use of them because mm -hmm. if you start somewhere in the mm -hmm. bank votes that are not doing, that are not useful to anybody, what is the point? So all the 2022, 2021, push them into circulation. And at the end of the day, people will bring them back to the bank and we are going to have a newer and a, uh, a, a, a newer and a neater currency. But we only hope that as we're having new currency, policy will be made that what that new currency can buy would also be better and will be improved and not be faced with devaluation. Okay, so in the coming weeks, we're going to be seeing a lot of changes and, um, of course, um, a lot of happenings. Is it time for people to pay more attention to the e Naira? Well, um, e, e, e Naira uh, is the same value with the normal Naira that we, we have. I think people have no reason starting money in their homes. Mm -hmm. I don't think it. If you have good intention, if your intention mm -hmm. are not, if you don't have any ulterior motive, why are you keeping money, you know? Take all the cash you have. Central Bank Governor have told us, some of us have also been going from one place to the other. Take your money back. Let it be covered. Let's have, uh, let's, let's have better monetary policy. It's for the good of all. And if you think you can take your money to the dollar, you will also lose because the cost of commodities you would buy today, by the time everybody go buying dollar and you want to now exchange back to Naira after a long time, the prices would have gone up. And this is education I believe that media and central bank will be giving to people. Anyone who does that does not mean well for our population. It does not mean well for our country.
So what should we do? What we should do, in fact, is to continue to provide education and also tell people e-Naira is an option you have. e-Naira to me is like a normal banking app you use for transfer. I have not mm -hmm. been able to see any difference between what e-Naira does and what other banking app is doing, or to, 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 to the best of my understanding. I'm yet to be convinced of any additional value e-Naira is bringing that all other banking apps have not been providing us with. Okay, I'm sincerely thank you, Mr. Paul, for coming on the program. Thank you so morning. very much for having me. Great yeah, to have a nice day. Yeah, thank you. And so we 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 just uh, move on now. In uh, 1981, a special intervention fund was established as a lifeline to address high-level natural and man-made emergencies. The House of Representatives is interested in knowing how the funds were disbursed and utilized by agencies concerned. Because mandated the committee to evaluate disbursement from the ecological funds and assess compliance with the objectives of the fund and our national laws. Nigerian lives and properties are at stake. During our oversight functions in the past, the committee had provoked sentiments at different fora that all beneficiaries of ecological funds should always strive at managing the funds agreeable to them. The current ratio used now is 52.68% for the federal government, 26.72% for state, and 20.60% for local government. It might interest you. Maybe for lack of knowledge, for example, that 072 for states, that 72 represents the ecological element of states. Going forward after the today's experience, states, if they really want to apply their resources to the purpose for this fund is made, should can come to federal government and copy the way they structure the ecological project office to be able to effectively uh, handle ecological issues in the federal states. Next is our Surviving COVID-19 series as put together by Edu AM. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Okay, I deal on any kind of AC pass, compressor, pipe, gas, anything containing AC and fridge. That's my business. <laughs> no, this is this is a city. Understand? At least 70% of people here in the city make use of fridge, and 50% of people make use of AC. So I feel best that this is the light channel that I can invest, and I will not regret it. How long have you been doing this very business? Okay, let me say four years now but actually during that COVID time it wasn't easy but you can't compare it to now because the rate of dollar now is frustrating the business understand that COVID now despite it was global issue but the economy standing now the way we see economy in this nation now man, is frustrating business it's frustrating business you can't buy something the same place today and buy it tomorrow so, so did you hear about the cbn grant for small and medium enterprises no you didn't apply. I didn't apply. So if you had to get the grant now how would it improve your business what would you do with it oh it's a nice idea and if I'm opportune to have your loan, it will help me to promote my business, understand? Buy more goods. Because as the way I see it, maybe before now to December, dollar might escalate more. So if I have the opportunity to grab the loan, I'll make use of it. Now we have, I will appreciate. Okay, if I'm going to receive the survivor fund, I will appreciate because it will help to boost my business more. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now to a matter that affects us all, motorists are lamenting the continued presence of petrol queues in Abuja, which has been in place for weeks. Residents are worried about what they call the erratic nature of a downstream and the productive hours they waste in search of petrol and its negative effects on the economy. Lydia Samson reports queue everywhere but if you go to other neighboring places there is four everywhere but the price is too high there are some place they are selling 250 some place they are selling uh, 230 but inside Abuja they are still selling normal price 
Ganyu Suleiman's frustration resonates with all the motorists interviewed. They are confused about the fuel situation, which has refused to abate for weeks now and is still undermining their daily productivity and struggle for survival. We are in this queue for a very long time. It's getting worse. Last week we were thinking it's getting better. We were thinking it's because of the local uh, expressway. But the way things are going now, it's getting difficult for people to buy fuel. I don't know when it's going to be regulated about these issues. Up to now, I didn't get my fuel, and I have a serious uh, duty to perform. While most petrol stations within the metropolis don't have products at the moment, the few that have products are overwhelmed with queues. But the ironic aspect of it all is that petrol holders, hitherto called black marketers, are all over the streets with products. And people have asked again and again, where are they getting their products from? In the digital world, whoever sees it, maybe they should please, maybe just, everybody has a, has a phone and has a small, just put a camera, they are all the populace to do their own possible best to also help us in knowing those kind of bad acts. A drive around Abuja reveals the petrol hawkers on the streets openly displaying various means in dispensing and selling their products in the cans. While many question the real reason for the current petrol hardship, others are wondering if petrol price has increased. There are government uh, control prices, which we have in Abuja at 175. On whether there is no longer government intervention to subsidy, he says what is unfolding is the beginning of the end of deregulation. For now, Ganyu Suleiman and other motorists are hoping for at least seamless product availability, irrespective of the price. As they say, getting from petrol station is always better and safer than getting from the black marketers. I couldn't agree less with Ganyu. Let's now see prices of other commodities on the global market scene. And it is a positive start for the equities market this Monday in Nigeria. The All Share Index inched up slightly than the previous trading session to close at 44,269.43 basis points as investors exchanged 103.26 million securities valued at 2.13 billion and 3,200 and six deals equity capitalization also inched up to 24.112 trillion naira. and let's now go to the global market as put together by nekaoko this tuesday markets are focused on the u.s midterm elections due later in the day for potential green lock in government which historically had been good for u.s talks stock futures were however flat in pre-market the Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 12 points or 0.04 percent after raising earlier gains, while the S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 were both fractionally lower. Stocks in Asia traded mostly higher early Tuesday morning as investors digest the Bank of Japan's summary of opinions and look ahead to the U.S. midterm elections. The Nikkei 225 in Japan rose 1.25 percent, with the topics also higher by 1.21 percent, while in South Korea, the Kospi gained 1.15 percent. As where the Hansang index in Hong Kong was 0.3% lower after struggling for direction, while mainland China's Shanghai Composite fell 0.6%. European markets on their part are heading for a mixed open as global investors look to the United States, where mid-term elections are taking place. Meanwhile, figures from African markets are still being expected. And this is where we end this episode of the program Business Express. 
We shall return tomorrow at 3 p.m. Don't forget you can access all previous episodes on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can communicate with us via various social media platforms. My name is Leah Katung Baba Tunde saying keep thinking and doing business. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>